We've got our new tier list for 2024 on gaming chairs, a bunch of new additions, and we're going to see how they stack up against the mainstays that we've seen for the past couple years. And we're going to kick it off with one of those new models, the Asus ROG Destrier. Now, I've had quite a bit of time in this chair, and the one thing that I really like about this design is I went with an ergonomic chair that was turned into a gaming chair instead of a racing chair. I think it has a much more open design, a lot more adjustability from that standpoint. I'm not a huge fan of the mesh seat. I don't love mesh seats overall, though, but I do love the armrest package. I think the backrest provides good support. I do wish that they had a headrest that would stay in place, but otherwise, I think it's a pretty well-built, well-designed chair. I'm at a C-plus for this one. Yeah, I think at $899, you're going to have a big expectation. Like Ryan said, this is closer to an office chair, though, than a gaming chair, which is a positive, but at $899, you'd expect a long warranty. This only comes with a one-year warranty. I don't think that's great for the price, and I have a problem with mesh seats, and this is one of those mesh seats with that sort of foam in the front edge. It's a deal killer for me. I'm going D. Yeah, so I echo some of these same thoughts. I agree with that front edge on the seat has some problems there. And the headrest, when it's in the right place, I actually really like how it feels. It moves around way too easily, so it doesn't doesn't stay where I like it to be. Some good things about it, I do like the looks of it. It's kind of edgier looking, and it has these cool adjustment handles that are like straps. So something really neat there. Ryan, you said that the, the arm pad, I don't really like this bump that they put on the arm pad, but was there a reason for that? I would assume that it's just to give you more padding on your elbows because they adjust so high and they're so versatile that it was designed for mobile gaming. So if you want your phone up in your face and your elbows are going to be kind of drilling into the arms, it's nice to have that little extra thick padding, which is something that I experienced just when using my phone. Yeah, so it's, it's still a C for me, so it's going to average out to a C. Next up on the list, we've got the Cougar Terminator. Now, this was a really interesting chair when I saw it online, so I knew everybody was going to love it in our videos. But unfortunately, there is a lot going on in that chair that actually does nothing. And then when you pair that with the fact that the price is $750, the seat is super narrow, rock hard, but the back is wide. This chair is really confusing to me, but what a one-year warranty with that $750 price tag. I got to go F tier on this thing. It's terrible. So the Terminator chair, really, I think this should be called like the Alien versus Predator chair because that's kind of what it looks like to me. Now, it is nice and big, so I like that part of it, but it does still have bolsters. So when you're sitting in it, if, you're, if your bottom is too wide, you're not going to be super comfortable. But again, if you're going for that gaming chair that has a really edgy look, that this is an option for you. So this is a low C for me. I have a tough time with this chair because I feel like they made it big and bulky and gaudy just for the sake of being big and bulky and gaudy. It doesn't serve a purpose. It's got this massive base that doesn't add any weight capacity to the chair. These massive casters, which are nice, and the backrest is huge. I get it. They were going for something different, a different look, but that means that you're paying a whole bunch of money for a bunch of stuff that does absolutely nothing, and it has major fit issues. I'm 5'9". I could not use this chair. I fit in the seat, but not the back. I can't even touch the headrest with my head. So for me, this is going to be a D tier. It would be F based on comfort, but it's a D tier because it's a decently built chair, but not something that I could get behind. I think if we're talking aesthetics on this chair only, I think I would give it a big boost because it has a very specific look to cert setups, but that's about it. D tier overall. So next up is the Mavics, which in a way is a little bit the opposite of the Cougar chair here because they didn't focus so much on looking like a gaming chair. They actually went for more of the office chair aesthetic. So I really like the backrest here. The flexible lumbar feels really good, but the seat is a little too firm for me. Um, I actually had this at a C in our previous list. After sitting in it some more, I actually moved it up to a B because I think I could spend long hours in this. Yeah, I think this is a good overall gaming chair. One of my favorite gaming chairs, if we're just going to look at gaming chairs specifically, especially because it has that ergonomic chair design and they didn't go for a crazy racing chair look. I think it provides good value for the price. I like the backrest a lot. I think the seat's comfortable. I think the arms could be a little bit more adjustable. That'd be my only gripe with the chair. But the recline range on this thing is massive. One of the only chairs that I've found that can compete with the flat back design of a racer. And so I'm going to be at a B tier for this one. Yeah, I got to pretty much say that's all true with the only exception on those arms. I go a little bit deeper. They just feel kind of cheap, not enough substance there. But honestly, if it wasn't for their bad return policy, which has gotten slightly better where it's just set fees, depending on where you are and their warranty improved, I can see this thing as high as an A, but because it's got those policies, I'm going B as well. It's actually going to end up at B tier. Next up, we've got the Herman Miller Logitech Gaming Embody. And for me, at the moment, this is going to be my pinnacle of gaming chairs. You're going to get a top-tier warranty with a top-tier build from Herman Miller. You're also going to get a chair that's loaded with adjustments. And for me, I love the fact that this chair provides so much flexibility. The direct opposite of most racing chairs, so you can really move around and stretch in the back. The seat's also really flexible. I just love everything about this chair. S-tier for me. 
This is one of the few chairs from Herman Miller that actually is flexible and allows you to really move around, and it's very much the opposite of the Aeron. The only thing for me that I don't like and basically makes it so I can't go S tier with it, upper portion of the back, it rolls over my shoulders. I notice that, and I get sore from it, and so I can't use it long term. I'm going to go A tier. So I really love the seat on the Embody. It's nice and wide, has that extra padding in it now, and the recline is just amazing. So it's similar to the Aeron recline, super smooth, and then you add that with the movement that Greg was talking about, the flexibility in the backrest. Plus, I just love the looks of this chair. For a gaming chair, it actually has that pixelated design, so it looks cool, and the pixels actually are doing something too. So pair that with all Herman Miller's policies, this is S tier for me. So with two S's and an A, that's S tier. The GT racing chair is about what you'd expect from a bucket style racing chair on Amazon that retails for about $100. Literally everything about it is awful with the exception of maybe the price. I'm going to go F tier. I mean, at least you're getting a chair for $100, which is kind of crazy, but the bolsters are really bad. There's actually a chair on our list that's even worse than this, in my opinion. So this is going to be an F plus. F plus is being very generous. This chair has basically nothing good about it. I'm being 100% honest. The build is terrible. The warranty is brutal. The armrests are rock hard and barely move. You've got bolsters, almost no padding. This is the definition of an F tier, or if we had a lower tier, I'd be putting it there. F tier overall. So next up, the Razer Fujin Pro. So this is a chair that, again, doesn't really look like a gaming chair. It has a lot of these office chair features. Now, some of that's good, some of it's bad. What I don't like is the front edge of this mesh seat. It has a, that pad, and you can kind of feel a little bit of the hard edge. So I don't love that. The headrest is great, though. It's super adjustable, and you can get it totally out of the way. The only reason that I'm going with a C plus here is because there's other chairs that are the same price that I like better. So like for me, I'd get the Ergo Human Greg sitting in it here. This is a very similar chair. It's cheaper, and it's better. I was actually really pleasantly surprised with the Fujin Pro. I don't think that the website's doing this chair justice just because when I saw the price and the pictures and the feature list on the site, I thought that this was just going to be a really overpriced, cheap looking chair. But to be honest, this chair reminds me of the Steelcase Carmen. Not quite as nicely built and not quite as fine tuned, but a lot of the same characteristics. I found it to be pretty comfortable in the time that I was using it. Really nice recline. I actually really liked the armrest and the headrest was good. I got this at a B. At $1,000 or 1049 whatever it's at right now, there are going to be high expectations for return policies, warranties. It doesn't hit there. That's a major concern for me. But like Ryan said, I was pleasantly surprised. It's, it doesn't look great on the site, but it actually is really nice in person. But unfortunately, it's got one of those seats, like Robert said, that I just, I don't do well in. And so with all of that said, I'm going to go B tier. It's actually B minus for me. It's going to be a B overall. The Herman Miller Vantam is a tough chair for me just because they did reduce the price down to $795, so it is $800, but now it's competing against some decent chairs like the Fujin we just looked at, the Mavics, the Destrier, and the problem that you're going to have is that it's not going to fit most people. So if it fits you, I would put it at around a C tier just because I don't love the arms. I don't love the recline. It's not deep enough for me. And I think the headrest leaves a little bit to be desired. But this chair is so limiting in who it can fit that if it doesn't fit you, it's just going to be an F tier chair. And that's going to be the problem with this. So I'm kind of in between. I'm going to give it a C tier just because if it fits you, it's decent. Even at $795 down from the $995 price tag, I know you get all the Herman Miller policies, which are going to help it out some, but like Ryan said, size and fit on this is really tough because most people are not going to fit in the chair, especially most people who could actually afford the chair. It's really built for smaller children. Parents are probably going to have to buy this for them. I gave it a higher grade in the past or a higher tier in the past. I'm going D tier on it now, just when I think about how hard it is going to be to fit the population. For me, it's just way too small, especially in the seat depth, just not nearly enough. What I do like is it does sit up nice and straight, which if you like that, if you like to be real upright, that's one advantage that it has. But it's still going to be a low C for me. It averages out to a C. The Hayworth Fern Halo Gaming Edition is a chair that doesn't really fit the mold of the fern that I like the most. It's so significant with that mesh backrest and the headrest, which is an absolute deal killer for me because I despise the headrest. Brings this thing all the way down to B, even with great warranty and return policies. Personally, I do like the lumbar, so I'm happy that that's added there. And the seat, I thought the seat was pretty nice with that vegan leather. Now, I, I just can't stand the headrest on this chair. So for me, this knocks it down to a B. But again, if you really like the looks, if you're looking for that halo look and you're maybe going to be okay with the headrest, it's still a good buy. I'm going to continue the theme with these guys. I don't love all four editions that they choose for you. I don't like the leather seat because it makes me warm. I prefer the digital knit back as opposed to the mesh. I don't like the lumbar support. I know a lot of people do, so that's just personal preference. And I hate the headrest. The one thing that I will say 
is that while we're down on the configuration of this chair, I'm at a B as well, it is still better than almost every gaming chair in the list from a build quality and adjustments, a comfort standpoint. It's just that we're comparing it to the gold standard. This has been an S tier rated chair, an A tier rated chair. So if you configure it or you like this configuration, it could be A or S tier for you, but we've got a B overall. The Herman Miller Sale. Now, this is a chair that is basically their regular office chair, but you can get some fancy colors in this, and they do look really nice. Now, the Sale has a very nice seat, good padding, but for me, this is another chair. I'm really too big for the chair. I wish they could do like a size A, B, C and give me a bigger chair, but unfortunately, because of that, it's going to be a B. I think the sale is a good chair, especially for that $900, $1,000 mark when being compared against other chairs of a similar price. Good build quality, great policies from Herman Miller. Get a good adjustment package. I really like the armrests on this chair. I like that you get the flexible kind of rubber-like mesh material on the back. So overall, I'm going to be at a B tier for this one. I'm just going to say that I have something a little bit different up my sleeve on this one because it doesn't fit me and that's a huge deal breaker. And at that price point, I think it's really important. Now you do get all the good Herman Miller policies, which would potentially boost it because the fit's so bad though. I'm going to go C tier on this and overall we're going to end up with a B. The S Racer is very similar to the GT racing chair we looked at earlier, but somehow it's even worse. You've got rock hard arms that don't adjust, the worst foam we've maybe ever seen on a chair, terrible recline, terrible policies. This is the definition of F tier. Yeah, like Ryan said, this chair is absolutely awful, and it is actually worse than the GT racing chair because the arms don't move at all, which is crazy to me, but they don't. This thing is just going to fill landfills. I'm going F tier. Yeah, I like to usually try to start with something positive about each chair, but I'm kind of at a loss at this one. So F for me, it's going to be F all across. Something you probably don't know yet about the Secret Lab Noya chair is the fact that it's got turbo mode in the lumbar, which is the only good thing about this chair, in my opinion, because the policies are terrible and you have to submit on social media to get a better warranty than if you just bought this expensive chair and should get it anyways. It's crazy to me, but because it's not as bad as the S Racer GT Racing, I'm going to go D tier here. The lumbar is definitely strong on this, and for me, it's a little too strong. And I also feel like I'm sinking through the seat and hitting the frame. Uh, one cool thing is it does have those arm adjustments under the, the arm pads, which a little gimmicky, but it can be kind of cool too. So this is a D for me. Yeah, I also like the trigger adjustment system, but I'm right there with these guys that I don't think that you're getting any bang for your buck for the price, especially upwards of six, $700 for this chair. It's got decent materials, but like Greg said, not a great warranty. And I don't like that Secret Lab makes you submit to get the full warranty length. It's also got an awful mesh seat and the armrests really have terrible placement. They're too wide. They're too forward. They don't come back with you. So from a comfort standpoint, pretty much an overall standpoint, I'm going to be at a D for this one, D overall. We have another chair from Razor. This is the Isker. Now, the Isker has some really restrictive side bolsters, which is very unfortunate. And on top of that, it also has a super strong lumbar support system, really too strong. Even if it's pushed all the way back, I, I can't sit in this chair. It pushes me out funny. This is an F tier. The problem with this chair is my favorite thing about this chair is the fact that if you spill water on it, it beads up and falls off. And if that's going to be the best thing about your chair and you're selling it for somewhere around five or $600, then you are in trouble because this chair is just really uncomfortable. And for some reason, the backrest has this crazy shape where your head gets pushed forward, but you have to scrunch your back in F tier. Yeah, Razor definitely tried to think outside the box with this crazy lumbar support but it's honestly awful and I think this chair just overall is too narrow too rigid and it's just uncomfortable especially in the seat I'm gonna go after here Next up, we've got another tech brand trying to jump into the gaming chair market. We've got the Lenovo chair. Now, I like the fact that they went with a more standard chair design instead of the racing style, but unfortunately, they, they missed the mark on this one. The mesh is brutal on this chair. One of the lowest quality mesh backs I've ever seen. The seat has this terrible opposite of waterfall front that really hits the back of your legs. I don't like the recline. And the arms have this ridge on the back that just gets in the way of your elbows. Unfortunately, this is an other F tier chair for me. I really don't understand what the ridge on the back of the armrest is for. It's so incredibly uncomfortable. The only thing you didn't say that I'm sure you felt the same way about is the fact that that seat looks thick, but it is hard as a rock and my butt went numb in it immediately. So that's never a good sign. I'm going to go F tier. Yeah, if there's one thing I kind of liked about it was the headrest feels nice, but just like the Asus chair, the other tech brand here, it doesn't stay in place. So it's like they almost had something good, but it moves so much that it's kind of unusable there. So another big problem, I don't know if you guys noticed, the fabric color on the mesh and the seat, they don't match at all. They look really bad together. So, so many problems, Fs all across. 
The Herman Miller Aeron gaming chair is pretty much an identical match to their regular Aeron Remastered. The only thing about this chair, though, for me is that it has a very polarizing seat, and fit is always a problem with the A, B, and C sizing. I would prefer a C back, but unfortunately, I have to get a B sized chair because I'm not wide enough to fit in the C chair. Policies are great, though. I'm going to go B tier. Now, this does have that perfect suspended feeling, and I love the recline. Now, for a gaming chair, I probably wouldn't go S tier because if I was at home gaming, I'd probably like the padded, like more like the embodied chair, but this is still an A tier chair. Yeah, this is obviously a super high-end chair, really high-end build, amazing policies, looks super good, and there's a lot of aspects that I really, really love about the chair. I love the arm pads, I love the recline, I love the lower lumbar support, but it just lacks that flexibility that you get with newer age, newer design chairs like the Embody, and I don't like the all-mesh seat, so I'm going to be at a B plus, and we're going to be at a B plus overall. Secret Lab definitely improved on the racing style gaming chair when they came out with the Titan Evo. It's much better than their Omega chair. So it still has the bolsters, but they're not quite as restrictive as some of those other chairs. So this does still have a hard back, so I can't go any higher than a C. Yeah, for me, the Titan is a tough one just because I feel that it's the best designed racing gaming chair. They've got the integrated lumbar support. They softened up the sides on the seats so that you can kind of use the majority of the seat. They've also got the magnetic pillow so you don't have the strap system, which is terrible. But it is still rock hard in the back and in the seat. And you have no flexibility to move around in the chair. I do feel that, like I said, this is the best racing style chair, but it is still just so limited that I can only bring it up to a C tier. One of the hardest things for me with this one, besides the seat, because it's incredibly hard, is the fact that they still have bad policies. So what Ryan said is true. They've got the best racing style gaming chair, but outside of, honestly, the the pillow, which is super comfortable, and the armrests, which are decent, but not narrow enough for me, I don't really see anything else that redeeming on this chair. I'm going D tier. It's going to be a C overall. Wow, that was a rough tier list. Huh? It's pretty clear that gaming chairs just aren't there for comfort yet overall. If you're looking for an upgrade, check out our office chair comfort cheat sheet down in the description. Thanks for watching.